I did it. I quit my job. I'm going for it. I'm chasing my dream of doing exactly what I like doing all day, every day, and hopefully finding a way to make a decent living wage while doing so. Maybe YouTube is going to be part of this. Maybe it won't. Here's a link to a video about the thought process that got me to this point so far. Hopefully making this content continues to fuel other people as well as myself. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Honestly, good or bad. I can tell you one thing. It is scary to quit your job. It is terrifying for me not to be looking for another one. What if everything I do sucks? What if I fail? Scary thoughts, right? But there are other thoughts too. What if everything doesn't suck? What if it's okay to fail and be wrong and make mistakes? Maybe that's just part of the process, part of the journey. Why don't I just do what I want, accepting that and expecting to have to make corrections and adjustments along the way? Everything always starts off with a rough concept in my head, usually one that has some sort of design flaw or issue, and I can't stop thinking about it. It just picks at me. I'll often find myself daydreaming about the problems or difficulties I'm likely to encounter. That's how it always starts. Eventually, I'll come up with probable solutions to potential obstacles for hypothetical problems I've created in my head. Once I think I have a few solutions narrowed down, I have to test them on an actual build. I am compelled to. That's how I'm wired. That motivates everything I do. Here I find myself, yet again, head always in the clouds, just like every teacher I've ever had my whole life has told me, dreaming up some new problem to solve, or possibly just creating new ones. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. Either way, I love sauna. However you pronounce it, however it's practiced, wherever it's done, I've always wanted one. But not just a typical stick frame building with a heater in it. I want to build something different, something cool, something awesome. Heavy slabs, timbers, beams that I've cut myself fresh off the sawmill. It's winter here. The first thing I need to do is remove the snow covering my logs so I can access them. Then I'll measure the length I need and remove damaged or otherwise compromised ends of the logs before bringing them over to the mill. Sometimes the logs will split off into multiple tops or have rotted out bases. Whatever makes a tree unusable as a beam is removed before I bring it over to the mill. Carrying the logs is good exercise and helps me to stay strong. I love doing jujitsu, but throughout the last couple of years maintaining any kind of regular training schedule has been difficult. The logs keep me humble. Well, being underneath them does. Once I get the selected logs trimmed and staged closer to the mill, the fun begins. Each log in turn is placed on the mill and flattened on four sides to a rough milled six inch by six inch by eight foot beam. For this project, everything starts life as a six by six. I'll be making a solid base to build everything on made out of six by sixes, joined with overlapping half lap joints in the corners. The first order of business is to find and mark center and reference lines. My first attempt, which is always the slowest and sloppiest, is with a chainsaw. I tap a chisel around my cut line to help prevent tear out. I use a chisel in a plane to flatten and square the faces. For my second attempt at making this joint, I opted to use my worm gear skill saw to make all the bread slice cuts and to cut down each side to set the depth. My skill saw doesn't go deep enough, so I have to use a hand tool to get all the way down. I clean up the joint with a chisel and a draw knife. I cut the remaining half lap joints then put my sills together and check my joints for squareness. With the bottom sills complete, I move on to the corner posts. More measuring, marking and squaring. I can't resist most opportunities to bust out my best friend. Engine exhaust is bad for you, so I always let some cold air in when I run my saw indoors. Dust isn't good for you either, so if I'm making any, I mask up. Whoops, dropped an end. No big deal. As always, don't do anything I do. It's probably a good way to get injured.
More trimming equals more firewood. Now to make the channels or mortises in the corner posts. After establishing center, snapping a couple chalk lines on either side is a fast and easy way to mark cut lines. A couple skill saws make thin slices easy to remove with a chisel. Then the full length is cleaned with a router. The first one always takes longer and is less refined than the ones that follow. Eventually, I have two complete posts. Originally, I was going to leave everything rough sawn, but my mom asked me to play in one piece, just to see. And I'm glad she did. Just look at the difference it makes. Great idea, mom. I'm slowly working my way through the infill pieces. One at a time, they are taken outside, worked and planed to a nice finish. I always start by locating and marking center lines, then using those lines for reference. I make my tenon ends similar to the way I made the corner posts, cutting and removing bread slices. Lots of them. This chisel makes all this easy. Next, I trim the ends off with a skill saw and clean them up before the piece goes back to its temporary resting place. This is my first go at this building style, so as soon as my first wall reaches 7 feet in height, I decide to assemble it, just to prove to myself, this is going to work. A speed square helps me drill half inch holes to accommodate stainless steel threaded rod that will connect the top and bottom sills. This should prevent the structure from racking and take up space between the infill beams as they dry and shrink. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one.